Hello, and welcome to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes Grand Arena Championships Season 7, Week 3, Round 3. My name is Boma Fett. This week, I'm going to be facing Carmine. This is for the uh, top spot in this week's bracket. I am 2 0, and so is Carmine. Let's take a look at the Hotbot for a quick comparison. From a distance, you can see I've got a lot of green on my side and he has a few select areas of red on his side. So let's zoom in and take a look in more detail. So for the season status, you can see that I rank higher, have a higher score, higher best score, higher lifetime. Uh, down here under season stats, I've got 50% more offensive wins, I've got more than double the number of undersize, I've got triple the number of clears, but look at this, 216 defensive wins. This guy sets a tough defense, so that's how he wins. He sets a really tough defense. Looking at our roster summary here. You can see that I do have a higher overall GP. My top 80 GP is higher. Top 65 characters, ships. Um, Zetas, I have a significant advantage in Zetas, 63 to 48. What that tells me is that this is a younger account. Zetas, you can't really buy Zetas. I mean, there are a couple of ways to buy like one or two Zetas here or there. But for the most part, Zetas are an indication of how long you've been playing. And so I've got 63 and he's got 48 telling me he has not been playing nearly as long as I have. Average speeds for Gear 11 Plus characters were even at 79. Uh, my top 80, I've got faster top 80. Here's a big difference. Gear 13, I've got nine, and actually one of those I just did last night, so that won't count. He's got 16, 16 gear 13s to my nine. Gear 12s, 10 to 26. So that's 42, 42 gear 12 and 13 compared to my 19. That is a huge difference. So this guy's got a very focused, top-heavy roster. In fact, Gear 11 Plus, I've got 62 characters who are Gear 11 or higher. He only has 58. But look, 42 of those 58 are Gear 12 and 13, whereas only 19 of my 62 are Gear 12 and 13. Looking at mods, mods are another way that you can often tell the age of an account. Um, so I've got 76 six dot mods. He's only got 47 um, But speeds while I do have an advantage as far as speeds um, The number of high-speed mods because he's got such a focused roster His top characters are going to be faster than mine So that's a, an interesting little twist there under relics even though he's got all those relic characters he only has 27 total relic levels so most of those characters, look, are in Relic 1 to 3. Whereas I've got seven characters who are Relic 4 or above, Relic 4 or 5. That said, just remember that even a Relic 1 character is still Gear 13. So saying only Relic 1, well yeah, that's still a Gear 13 character. That's still a significant bump up from a Gear 12 and a really, really huge bump up from a gear 11. And most of my characters are gear 11. All right, let's take a look at Carmine's roster and see exactly how this all breaks down. Okay, so here we see Carmine uses shock troopers and they're all reliced in the arena and has a five-star negotiator. Let's take a look at some squads. Here are all of those relic characters. A 
we've got a Relic 1 Bosk with the Bounty Hunters. I'm sure I'm going to see that on defense. We've got the 501st clones are all Relic'd. Cody and Clone Sergeant are both gear 12. We've got a Relic, General Grievous, and his squad, except Droidica is only gear 1. Uh, we also have BB-8 and R2-D2 are both sitting at gear 8, which is a little undergeared. And L337 is gear 12. Empire, we have uh, Palpatine. Look at this, we have Director Krennic and Death Trooper are both gear 12 with their Zetas. So that's interesting to note. And he does have a Relic Stark and gear 12 Veers, so he does run Imperial Troopers as well. Ewoks, level 1, gear 1. That means no C-3PO. First Order. This is how he gets all of those defensive wins. He's got all of these Relic First Order, and then a Gear 12 Zeta Hux that he throws on there to stop turn meter and counterattacks. He does have a Padme squad. Interestingly though, Ahsoka is still Gear Level 1. Geos are mediocre, gear level 8 and 9. Here are those Imperial Troopers. Jedi. Jedi Knight Revan, level 1, gear 1. Bastila LaShawn, level 1, gear 1. Choli Bindo, level 1, gear 1. Night Sisters. Asajj, level 1, gear 1. Spirit, level 1, gear 1. Zombie, level 1, gear 1. Daka, level 1, gear 1. We've got Mission and Zalbar, Karth and Kandaris, but there's not really a fifth for this squad. Phoenix are geared up just enough to get Thrawn. Rebels, but look at this. CLS, level one, gear one. Resistance, Jedi Training Ray, level one, gear one. There is a Rogue One squad. He has Relic Nest. And look, Vandor is relic So he's got a Kira, Han Solo, Young Solo team. Separatists, with Droidica not being geared up, he can throw new Gunray on his Grievous squad. Dooku is level one gear one. Sith. We do have Darth Revan at gear 11. We've got Treya at gear 11. They both have all their Zetas. Scion, Nihilus, Batstila, but no Malak. And Wampa is five stars gear eight. Okay, so I'm gonna cut in here with a little bit of commentary. Um, Carmine has made interesting choices with his roster. To me, this looks like it is a second account because Carmine knew exactly what he wanted to do in constructing this roster specifically for Grand Arena. He's ignored squads that normally people gear up, things like CLS, JTR, and Jedi Knight Revan, just completely ignored. And instead, he's focused very specifically on squads for Grand Arena, both on offense and on defense. So while Carmine's account may be younger than mine, I have a feeling Carmine has been playing for a lot longer than I have. Okay, now back to my original commentary. I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as changing up my defense, if I do at all. Um, it almost seems pointless. I could save everything for offense to try and get the full clear, but that means that he'll have an easy time full clearing me, or I can set a really heavy defense and then neither one of us will be able to clear, and I just have to hope that I do a little bit better against his tough defense than he does against my tough defense. And I kind of hate that, so not sure what to do. All right, so let's take a look at the defense that Carmine set, and then we can make a plan. All right, here at the top, 
We've got General Grievous and his squad with Newt. Uh, normally I would take Jedi Knight Revan against Grievous, but I may not be able to. I may have to come up with an alternative plan. So this Kira, Nest, Vandor, Hermit Yoda, and L3, this is a timeout squad. And I may just play into that uh, and take CLS and knock out everybody but Nest. And then, of course, CLS against Nest, there's so much turn meter removal that you end up timing out. And then I can take in a cleanup squad to just kill off Nest. That's not ideal, but I think it may be what I have to do because of where I need to apply my other squads. Here on the bottom, we've got a Padme squad uh, with no Ahsoka. So that's interesting, but... Grandmaster Yoda is here. He doesn't have his Zeta, so that's a bonus, and he's only gear 11. Uh, but there is Barris with a Zeta, so defensively this will be a strong squad. And we've got Bounty Hunters, which I'm not really scared about. Bosk is Relic 1, but I should be able to beat this squad. So my plan, I think, is... CLS and a cleanup crew against Kira. Going to go with Palpatine with Nihilus against Grievous. We'll mirror match Padme and we'll take Jedi Training Ray against Bosk. Now the reason that I want to do it that way is because in the back here I am 99.9% .9 certain is going to be that First Order squad that's all relicked up and has Hux with the Zeta. And so in order to beat that squad, I'm going to need my Jedi Knight Revan. And so I need to save Revan for that First Order squad. The other squad I expect to see back here is uh, Geos, and his Geos are only gear eight and nine, and so my Treya should be able to handle that. So each of these counters I know can work. The question is, will they work and that might come down to mods it might come down to my strategy and how well i'm able to keep my composure and uh, rng just pray to rng jesus um, as far as the defense i set it should look familiar i did make one small change in the back which is i put my phoenix this time and the reason for that is I wanted my Geos available, and I wanted, um, I had this crazy idea that if I needed to, I could split up my Jedi Knight Revan squad, and Jedi Revan's leadership is not just for Jedi, it's also for Old Republic. So the Old Republic characters don't get as much of a boost as Jedi do, his leadership is better for Jedi, but it also works with Old Republic. So I could put some of my Jedi with Bastila, keep a couple of Jedi with Jedi Knight Revan, and then maybe throw in Mission and Zalbar with Jedi Knight Revan for extra damage and Zalbar's taunt. So that was my thinking there. We'll see. I may end up doing that, but if everything goes to plan, I shouldn't have to. Okay, so... I'm going to do this a little differently than normal. Normally I record voiceover while I'm doing my attacks, but my recording did not, uh, my voice didn't record this time for some reason. So I'm going to do voiceover post battle, just kind of a recap. You can see that Carmine went first and took two battles to beat my Newt Grievous squad. Other than that, he one shot the rest of my defense. He only scored a 1706, which isn't a great score, um, and against a normal opponent, I'd be confident I could beat that. However, I was really apprehensive about using counters that I was not familiar with. I didn't know if I had my characters modded correctly. I didn't know if they were high enough gear tier. Um, and so very, very apprehensive about this um, and really kind of going into it expecting to lose. So... I decided to go after the bottom group first. I was a little bit more confident in those counters. So I decided to start with Padme and do the mirror match. 
I was fairly confident this would work because I do have higher geared characters on this squad. Um, however, I'm still not great with Padme. Because she was never my arena uh, team, I just don't know the mechanics that well on this squad. Um, I probably should have stuck to doing more basics and not calling assists or doing retribution, things like that. But you will see that I do indeed do retribution with Kenobi and uh, I'm calling Ahsoka to assist. There you can see my Kenobi's almost dead. Here's where I do retribution when I shouldn't and that calls Ahsoka to assist. I try and kill Anakin here with a kick to the face because I notice I've got a lot of stacks on Padme. That doesn't work. There's a big assist against Kenobi that did nothing. My Kenobi's still holding up, so I was happy about that, but I was a little worried. And then I got a notification because I forgot to put it on Do Not Disturb. So as if I needed a distraction, right? So at this point I'm starting to get a little bit worried. It seems like I just, I can't get them down, they can't get me down. I'm not building up enough stacks of courage to really do anything. The assisting, the countering, it's all backfiring. There's a bunch of dodges, things are not going well, and then Anakin does that. So my Anakin responds, kills Kenobi and Yoda, and I'm feeling a little bit better. Then I'm able to take out his Anakin. So I know I have it won at this point, but I also know it's going to be pretty ugly banners. So 52 banners, I was just happy to get through it in one shot. At this point I figure if I can just one shot everything, even if the banners are ugly, I may have a chance of winning. So we go in against these bounty hunters with my Jedi training ray. You've probably seen me do this plenty of times, you've probably seen lots of other people do this plenty of times. So I'm fairly confident in this counter. I do this all the time. It's easy peasy. And then the notifications start up again. And so I'm starting to get frustrated and distracted by those. Try and stay focused. I go after Boba Fett. I put the wave down on Bosk. And more notifications. We kill Boba once. Django gets off a burn. So I decide to go to Do Not Disturb. I usually do that before I start recording and I forgot this time. And even though it's on Do Not Disturb, the notifications continue. So I'm distracted by that. I'm frustrated by that. And you'll see that play out a little bit in terms of I don't play exactly as efficiently as I should. So for instance right here I should have targeted Django and I went after Bosk instead. Now I do have the wherewithal to stun Cat Bane before going back and working on Django. We kill Django once, we kill Django a second time or almost. Do another burn which kills Django and then again I hit Bosk when I should have been going after Cat Bane. We stun Bosk and then I realize Cat is there and I switch over to Cat. And here's where I get really dumb and I try and hide everybody even though Dengar's on the other squad, and it does nothing. So we pound away at Bosk, get rid of him, and now at this point we should be delaying things in order to recover some more banners, get one more Illuminated Destiny, but of course I go ahead and I kill him. So we don't get very good banners, 56. That's not terrible, but 
you should be able to get a 58, 59, even a 60 with that counter. So we've opened up the back and sure enough exactly what I thought was going to be there is there. We've got that relic first order squad with Hux and we've got Geonosians. I know exactly which counters I'm going to take against these and I know that they will work no problem. So I decide to go to the front zone and do the riskier counters. So we go in against Grievous first and we take in our Palpatine with Nihilus and Pastela Sean Fallen. I've never done this counter before. I know the idea behind it. You just try and stall out until you get the Annihilate on Grievous. So I'm just trying to pass the, uh, the damage around. I got a few stuns there, which is great. I opt not to Fracture, because I thought, well, if I can get Grievous out and Fracture Grievous, then I don't have to worry about him attacking when I kill one of the other uh, members of the squad. It's a little bit of a miscalculation. I should have just Fractured B2 here. You can see that Newt's health is getting low but I didn't notice that too much at the time I was playing. So I'm just attacking B2 and Magna Guard. Again, I have an opportunity to fracture and I don't, but I'm at least smart enough to get the stun there on B2 and I switch to B1 and start knocking down stacks on B1. Probably should have done this earlier. So here's where I make my big mistake, and I do the AoE, which kills Newt, and Grievous attacks. And then he takes out Bastila Sean. So now I'm feeling a little bit stressed. I'm worried if this is actually going to work. But thankfully, here's the Annihilate. I get rid of Grievous, and now it's smooth sailing the rest of the way, but... I'm going to have garbage banners. At this point though, I'm just happy to get this done. I'm happy that the counter worked, even though it wasn't efficient. It was a one shot and that's what I need. I just need one shots. I tried to get back one more banner. Uh, it doesn't really work. Magna Guard is going to steal a banner here at the end, which really frustrated me. I've got uh, Vader is up to full health. And then I throw the Saber to kill him, and he gets that last attack and takes away another banner. So 51 banners. Terrible. But it was a one-shot. And so I was happy with that. I can work on that counter more in the future, and that will free up my Jedi Knight Revan to face other squads. Now here's where I make the big mistake. I'm thinking, I need to one-shot this squad. My original plan was a two-shot. So I decide that I'm going to try my Geonosians here. I'm thinking, if I can get some well-timed hits with Spy, I can take out those hard-to-kill characters. It seemed like a good plan at the time. It was not a good plan. Okay, so I've sped this battle up because it turns out that my Geos just did not have enough damage to do anything to the opposing team. Vandor kept healing and healing and L3 kept taunting. I would get them close and then they would heal right back up. So. And I, I had to take out Vandor first, because otherwise he would revive whoever I killed. So I kept switching back and forth between L3 and Vandor, and just could not kill any of them. So it was a big waste of time. I should have just backed out. It became apparent fairly early on that I was not going to be able to kill any of them. Um, I should have backed out and not left them turn meter loaded. But of course... Being silly, I decided, well, let's just put it on auto and see what happens. And what happened is what you'd expect to happen. 
it went right to the end. They actually didn't time out. They ended up killing my last Geo with a couple of seconds left. Um, but it was a bad decision. I should have just done my original plan. And there's the defeat. I'm frustrated with myself. I'm questioning whether CLS will even be able to take that squad. Uh, so I decide to go back to the other zone where I know I can beat these teams. I take my Jedi Revan against the First Order. First Order of Business is taking out Hux. So I mark Hux, get rid of him. I'm stuck behind Kylo's taunt, but I just figure, you know what? If he wants to die, I'll oblige him. So I spread the buffs, I do the wave, and then I make a tactical mistake. I try and steal the advantage with the AoE and crew counters and gets rid of my buffs. So that was a mistake continue to hit crew and he continues to counterattack. So now I've finally got an opportunity to get rid of his taunt and then stormtrooper taunts. So now I'm stuck behind another taunt. So I throw up a taunt of my own, not that it matters much. And now Revan's going to get a turn, and I realize he can go around the taunt. And so I target Phasma, and I call Yoda. And we almost kill Phasma, and then I take her out with the AoE. Spread the buffs around. Call Yoda to attack Stormtrooper. And now here I'm considering calling Revan to assist, but I decide against it because I want Yoda to keep that buff so that he can't be counterattacked. So we're just hitting Stormtrooper, and it doesn't seem to be doing much. Finally, he loses the taunt. We get a big counterattack against original Kylo, and I decide now's the time to take him out. So I do call Revan to assist, and then we mark crew and we get rid of him. So Stormtrooper is not typically the one you leave to the end, but that's the way it worked out in this match. And old Ben is missing a bit of protection, and Yoda has bonus protection, but I'm not sure if he's full on protection. Turns out he was, so 59 banners. I'm very happy with that. So then we're going to go in against the Geonosians, and we're going to take our Treya, Scion, and Nest combination. Normally this squad includes Nihilus, but I've already used Nihilus, so I'd like to take a fourth or a fifth. You never know with the Geos, they can get off those lucky shots and kill your characters. But in the end, I decide there's nobody really worth taking, and his Geos are low enough gear level that I think I should be able to win this. So we go into battle shorthanded. And they start attacking my Treya. But she's holding up pretty well, better than normal, because these are lower gear Geos than I normally face. They switch to Scion, which I'm happy about. They even go after Nest, who for some reason didn't counterattack. And then Spy gets off a big hit. So with Nest, I consider hitting Spy, and then I decide to try and kill the Brood Alpha, which doesn't happen. They start attacking Nest, and she starts counterattacking. So here we go, counterattack. So Brood Alpha is dead. The only danger now is a big hit from Spy. So just killing them off as quickly as possible to get to Spy before Spy can get a big hit. And then there it is. Spy gets the big hit, but it doesn't kill Scion. That saved me a banner. So 56 banners, not great, but I'll take it. Now back to that timeout squad. What do I do here? I know if I take my CLS, I'm going to end up timing out against Nest, but I don't really see any alternative. So I take in my regular CLS squad. 
I'm not even sure if this is going to work. I'm not sure who to stun. I finally decide on stunning Nest. L3 is taunting, so I decide let's just kill L3. Since Vandor's not prepared, I can kill her and he won't revive her. So I just need to kill her as quickly as possible before Vandor can get prepared. So one more hit should do it. And we're good. So next we switch over to Vandor, because we need to kill Vandor so that he can't get prepared and revive anyone else. We chew through Vandor pretty quickly. And now I'm starting to really kick myself, because had I just done this the first time, I could have cleaned these guys out. But now we're stuck on Nest. And I knew going in this was going to be a problem, but there's nothing I can do about it at this point. I'm just waiting for Hermit Yoda to come out of stealth, and there it is. So now I can get rid of Hermit Yoda so that when I bring another squad in after this, there's no Grandmaster's training. I decide to stun Nest, and then I see that she's come out of the stun, and so I try a big hit, and it just isn't enough. It barely takes away half of her protection. So I kill Hermit Yoda, and the rest of the battle is futility. So I've gone ahead and I've sped up the video. It's just my characters attacking her over and over and over again. They keep removing turn meter, meaning that she never takes a turn, meaning that she never loses the bonus protection. And so all of my attacks do nothing. Now, at one point, I think she does get a turn and I get a hit but it's not really enough to do much. I don't think I ever get down past her protection. Um, I do put it on auto at one point, thinking maybe the AI will do a better job than I am, um, and that doesn't work either. In fact, the AI is worse at it and removes even more turn meter than I was. Um, and so it's just, look, I knew going in that this was probably going to happen. I have not figured out a way to use my CLS to beat Nest because they're just not high enough level. I know if you've got Relic solo that he can hit hard enough to get through that protection up, but my solo is still uh, gear 11. So there's no way for me to win this. It's just banging my head against a wall. I'm at this point really, really kicking myself they chewed through the rest of the squad so easily. I should have used them the first time, and then I could have brought in a cleanup crew to deal with Nest. So there's the draw, and now I have a new problem. What do I do to clean this up? My original plan was to use Geos and have Spy get a big hit to take Nest out. Now in retrospect, I don't think that would have worked. So I decide that Rexecute is probably my best bet. So I'm gonna take in Rex and Wampa and Fives. Um, and I've been working on my clones. They're still not good, but they're okay. So I go down and I also take in Sarge and Echo. Now I do have the Zeta on Fives. So if either Rex or Echo dies, then Fives will sacrifice himself and give his stats to Rex and Echo. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for here, is I need either Rex or Echo to die first. So here we go, Nest is countering. Countering, countering, she's got exposed. There, she almost killed Echo. But she's also putting in good work against Fives. So I'm a little worried that she could kill Fives first, and that would be bad. Now, I was actually kind of smart, and I did not put the Omega on Fives that gives him the taunt. So my Fives will not taunt. It's a little bit of strategy there. Rex is almost dead, Echo's getting low, and then that killed Rex. And so Fives sacrificed, and now I've got Super Troopers. 
I decide against the Rexecute there because the more my clones attack, the more powerful the Rexecute is. And so I decide to take it a little bit longer. I don't think my guys are in danger of dying. Well, Echo's getting close. And so here I decide finally to Rexecute and it works and I get 23 banners. So at this point, I am really kicking myself. I'm wondering, could I have just done the clones to begin with? And then I see the finalizer. And I've never faced finalizer before, so I'm a little worried until I see that it's only four stars. And then I'm not so worried anymore. So I take in my normal negotiator fleet. In these GACs, I do put crew in my starting lineup so that he can get a stun right off the bat. It's not what I do in Fleet Arena. It's just what I do in GAC, but it doesn't hold very well on defense. So I'm going to start off by stunning Anakin. And then we get the Breach. I put that on Kylo, just because. We do the AoE and then he gets an AoE, and he gets the buff immunity on my Houndstooth. But I'm able to take out his Anakin pretty quickly. And then we start going after Kylo's shuttle. We take that out. And then I decide against bringing in a reinforcement, and instead I put the buff on Anakin to keep him alive. And a big hit here, and easy enough, 59 banners. So the final score ends up being 1706 to 1689. So I am a little bit kicking myself. I think if I had played a little bit smarter with my counters, I could have won that. Um, but it was a learning experience. And you know what, if I had used my CLS followed by the Geos, that probably wouldn't have worked anyhow. So congratulations, Carmine. Thank you for a good match. And thank you all for watching my video. I will see you next time.